Hey gang, welcome back. At this point, you should have installed the Champ software. You should have set up your database so you have the little green light there and the Apache web server is running. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you have missed a video. So make sure you go back and watch the video that shows you how to download and install Champ. Now, if you are a 1550 student, you are in the wrong video, right? This is for the 2440 class. 1550, you have a different video. 2440, this is the video for you that's gonna get PHP set up and ready for you to use it. Now, if you have a web server or web service, such as Apache in, the, in our case, running on a server, and you're actually on that local machine that has it, whether it's a server in Timbuktu or one right here in your office, in your home, in your desktop, wherever it's at, if you're actually at that machine or you have code that's sitting on that machine and running, you can actually access that directly by typing in the URL of that or the IP address of it. So if I go here to a web browser and it's the same on pretty much every server with a few exceptions, if you change a setting or something, you could cause it to be different. But 127.0.0.1 that takes you to this is an actual live website that's being hosted on the Mac machine right here not live on the internet just local right here on the machine but it's a live site being hosted and that's the URL now notice it goes to this dashboard page we'll talk about that in just a minute but keep in mind that when there is an IP address there's usually a URL not far behind right so just like any website on the internet it has an IP address, but we never go to the IP address. We actually go to www.whatever.com. Well, this is no different. It just the only thing that's a little different is that the whatever.com is simply just the word local host. As you can see, that takes us directly right here. Now, being a 2440 student, you have some HTML background and, and hopefully you've taken 1430. And you know that when somebody goes to www.whatever.com, that what's really happening is wherever that website is hosted, it's looking in the public underscore HTML folder or the htdocs folder, depending on the type of server you have set up. So it looks inside of that public HTML or htdocs and it looks for index.html. And that is the default page that will be displayed when you go there. Well, right now in localhost, in the public underscore HTML or HTDocs here on my local machine, there is an index.php file and it is code that reroutes to this dashboard page. Inside the dashboard page, there is your typical index.html. In fact, if I go there, you'll see that it doesn't change anything on the page. It's the same thing as just going to the folder. And that's just how websites work and that's something you should know from your 1430 days. Now. We're going to go take a look at where those files are so we can actually edit them. So in order to get there, we just go into Finder, into Applications, and then go to our Champ folder and to this folder right here called htdocs. Now, htdocs is the equivalent of public underscore html. And you may be more used to the public underscore html or you may be used to htdocs, it just depends on the kind of server that you've used in the past. This is the, they're, the, they're synonymous, so the same thing. So I go in here, and sure enough, there is the index.php file. Now, if there's an index.php and a .html, index.html, PHP will win the battle, and that one will be displayed, and the index.html will not. In this case, there's only the PHP, so that's what's gonna be displayed. But let's actually go ahead and edit it with our text editor here, Sublime Text. And this is code that you may not necessarily understand, but basically it's saying, hey, when you come here, redirect to this dashboard folder, which as we know is exactly what happens when we try to type in localhost. It's essentially, it's the same thing as saying, go to localhost index.php. And when I do that, it's just gonna redirect to dashboard. Doing that or doing just local host, it's all the same thing. It all redirects there. Now, if you want to, you can actually go back to that file, which I accidentally closed, and let's go ahead and edit that again. And I'm gonna change it now 
to just be some plain old HTML, right? I'm just going to cut this and we'll just say h1, hello, h1. Now, this, even though this is an index.php file, you can still put plain HTML in it. That's, we'll learn more about that later when we get into how to write PHP code and what exactly is it and so forth. But for now, let's save it. And of course, we've got to put our password in. All right, put that in. And now this is saved. And if I come back over here to localhost, it says hello. That's exactly what's in our file over here. All right? So I'm going to put it back the way it was, though, because I like having it redirect there. Now, you don't have to have it redirect. You can have it this way or have it redirect. I like having it redirect because it has a link off to PHP my admin and frequently asked questions and a bunch of other things that are nice to look at. I could, though, just have it say, this is my home page, but what's the point? Because that will never be live. It's just what's sitting here on my local machine. What you already have, you should already have a server set up, a remote server from previous classes, and you've already got a front page or whatever. If you want to take that front page and bring it down to your local machine so that this local machine matches your server, that's totally fine. I prefer leaving it this way so that it redirects. Now, the other thing we're going to look at, though, inside the HT Docs, if we're going to create new projects, which obviously we will in this class, we're going to write a whole bunch of websites, you need to create a new folder in here. So I'm going to add a new folder and we're going to call it palindromes. That's a project we're going to be doing. And then inside of my text editor here, let's just go ahead and make a new one. And we'll say, I'm going to write some real PHP code here. And don't worry if you don't understand it, we'll learn that later. But it's going to say echo and I'm going to say, hello, palindromes. And let me close that. It's supposed to be an H1 there. I goofed back up. Now, what exactly, how does this work? Don't worry about it. That's, I promise, we're going to learn all about that later as we move on. All right, so now I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to save it. And now when we save it, we want to make sure, first of all, notice it takes the code and puts it in the save as up there. That's bad, right? We want to get rid of that, and we're going to call this index.php. That is our root main default file that goes into the folder that we just made which is called palindromes if i look inside of htdocs and palindromes now it's going to go here and it's going to be called index.php save it now i have some nice syntax highlighting and it's saved and now if i come over here to localhost slash palindromes there we go there's my palindrome website now, of course, the idea is when we make the project, we upload it to the server. Well, if you look back in here, this HT Docs will match up exactly looking like what your HT Docs looks like on your server or your public underscore HTML looks like on your server, whichever one you have. So everything that's in here. Now, you don't have to move this icon, favicon dashboard, Bitnami, all this stuff. You don't have to move any of this stuff up to your, ser your remote server. But this, which is one of our projects, you do want to move it up there. So by the end of the semester, this will be full of a whole bunch more folders, and they'll all be uploaded to your server. But what's nice about this is now it's local on your machine. You can write PHP code right here on your machine and test it locally. And you don't have to worry about writing the code, then uploading it live to a server that runs PHP, and then testing it remote, remotely, where you have to keep uploading every time you want to test. You can just test it right here local on your machine. One last little tip here I want to make sure that you're aware of. So I'm going to close this and close this, close all this. These two services right here, if they are not running for whatever reason, then you will not be able to view PHP. So when you reboot your machine, this will shut down. Champ will shut down, obviously. Or sometimes it just shuts down for whatever other reason. So I'm going to go ahead and stop these and show you what exactly will happen if it's not running. So they're both being stopped. Once they go from yellow to red, then I'll just go ahead and shut it down. There we go. Let's close that out. And now it's completely shut down and I've turned off Champ. So now if I try to go to localhost, I can't go there because I don't have a web server running. I can't serve up web pages if I don't have a web server running, right? 
So how do we get that turned back on? Go into your finder, head over to Applications, go down to the Champ folder, and then look inside of Champ Files, and you want Manager-OSX right there. And I just noticed right here there's actually a hot link to it, so either one of those will work just fine. So let's go ahead and double click that, and it's going to ask you for your password. Put that in. Once that's in and Champ opens up, go ahead to Manage Servers, Start Apache by clicking the Start button there, let it run and once it turns green and only once it turns green then go ahead and click on MySQL. You want to make sure your web server is running first then click on MySQL start that up. Once they're both running then you'll have access to everything just like we did before. So give that another second there. And now if we go back over here to localhost everything's back working again. So that's it. You now have Champ installed. You have a PHP of the, of the ability to write PHP, you have your Apache web server running, you've got your database server running, which we're going to use a few weeks into the course when we learn how to work, connect our code, our PHP code to a database and so forth. But you have everything you need now to develop full blown web applications right there on your desktop. Obviously, we haven't learned how to write those that code yet, that comes later, but now you're all set up for future classes. So that's it, folks. I'll see you all in class or online in another video.